Oh, hey guys. Don't worry, I saw you there. I ain't gonna give you the old cliche. So, if you're watching this video, then as of now, it's my ninth anniversary of being 21. And while going to another decade year old is pretty much a celebration for a lot of people, for me, it's scary. It is kind of scary knowing that I've lived three decades in this world. And when I reflect, it always feels like I haven't accomplished much of anything in this life. But then when I really do dig back, I suddenly realize just how much I have changed over time. How much Nitz the Gamer has changed. How much I have changed, not just as a person, but in general. Well, some of you probably might know my past. Some of you may not know my past. And obviously I'm not going to go into everything that happened within uh, this video. But I'll, I'll give you guys a brief history of Nitz the Gamer. How I started off where I am, how I got here, and I could definitely say it's definitely personal. It's definitely personal being able to reveal all this information for you, but then again, this information you're bound to find out if you just dig deep enough into my channel, or even on my other channel. Yes, I do have another YouTube channel as well. So, without further ado, here's the brief history of Nitsa Gamer for my ninth anniversary of being 21. Ever since I was a small kid, I was always socially awkward around other people, or I just sucked at socializing in general. Because of that, I had little friends at school and was a constant target of bullying. But the one thing I did find a lot of comfort in outside of school was movies and video games. My options for gaming were the Nintendo 64 or the Super Nintendo, and honestly, I think my very first video game ever played was Super Mario 64. But my all-time favorite game of all time to play was The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. It took quite a year or two for me to actually beat this game, and I did it without being able to read. I had a strategy guide to help me through when needed, but again, can't read, so I could only rely on pictures. Video games and movies were like magical ways of storytelling for me and were always so awe-inspiring to me, especially as a kid when I had no idea how they were made. And the one thing I always wanted to do myself was create stories myself. So I wrote stories of kids who go on crazy and dangerous supernatural and sci-fi adventures, and the theme of the hero standing up against the villain was always an inspiring idea for me. Because of that, I wanted to be a book writer at the time. Making movies and video games was beyond my realm of knowledge and understanding, so maybe if I write a book series, I could have my visions be shown. So for a good chunk of my childhood, I dreamed of being an author. But that would suddenly change when elementary school was behind me. In late 2008, I was in my biology grade 8 class where we had to do a science project called Cell Wars. Pretty much a science project talking about the different types of infections and how the human body fights them off with white blood cells or the aid of antibiotics. I had a Mac laptop where I discovered I could film webcam clips through an app called iMovie. A very simplified editing tool with not that many options, but it worked for what I had in mind. Me and my science partner would act out the roles of the affections and defense systems, and let's just say, it's a cringy as hell project. I am the skin of the body. I protect the body from many diseases from getting into the body. Now, oh no, here comes a virus right now. State your name, you virus. I am Darth Virus. So, Darth Virus, what do you want? I want to get through this door to the body. I'm sorry, but my job is to not let anyone like you get into the body. You can't even fool me. Hey look, a two dollar bill. Okay, skin is not attracted to money. 
okay? And second of all, if you're looking for a way in, well, you're not. So get lost, you creep. Fine. Geez, what does that guy think he is? I wonder what his next plan's gonna be. Hi, I am food and not a virus. Really? <laughs> you're you're not a virus? That's right, you're a virus! Get lost! No, I feel so. And yet, we somehow got an A on this damn thing. Though honestly, despite how cringy and boring it is to watch, with maybe only the bloopers being the fun part to watch... Rough draft sucks. Believe me, we know. We have about three hours of bloopers and we have about a ten minute video. There was just a lot of incorrect information throughout the damn project. For one, antibiotics are effective against bacteria, not viruses. Yet we treat the antibody like he's Luke Skywalker and the virus like he's Darth Vader. I'm gonna tell you one thing before I kill you. What is it? I am your father. Uh huh. Okay, first of all, you are not part of this body. And how can an antibody turn into a virus and and you came from a faraway place? Dang, I thought it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, the cringe. So, why am I bringing this up? Well, sometime after New Year in March 2009, I created my very first YouTube channel, much to the protest of my mother, and created Nitsa94. Yeah, this was the original Nitsa Gamer before Nitsa Gamer, and most of the content on here was pretty much just me doing webcam videos before I had a Kodak pocket camera that could capture 720p quality. And while I had nothing to show for it, I was very passionate about wanting to become a filmmaker and given up on my passion of being an author as I found the next best medium of storytelling. Now, to cover everything that happened during this life cycle would be a long video, and I really don't feel like looking at every single flash drive that I could find or can't find to find the old clips of some of the unreleased or incomplete videos. But if you guys would like to know more about this era, I'm happy to elaborate more maybe in the near future. But the main question you're all likely wondering is, when was Nitsa Gamer born? Nitsa Gamer was created in March 30th, 2010. While filmmaking has always been my main passion, I created a side channel for gaming content. Little did I know, this would practically be my main and only channel on YouTube I still use to this day. I really loved a lot of the gaming videos and I wanted to do some myself. Some of the things I wanted to do was Let's Plays, Glitch videos, and Mario Machinima videos. That third one never came to be. It wouldn't be until August 19th of that year that I would release my first video of Conker's Bad Fur Day showing how you couldn't run the game on the Mac emulator 64s. Bear in mind, I used to be a Mac user back in the day, and it wouldn't be until March 27th of 2011, a year after the channel was created, that I took Nitsa Gamer seriously and did my first Let's Play that I believed was my very first video game ever played, Super Mario 64. All of these videos still exist to this day if you really dig back and watch my old content. And so, Nitsa Gamer finally started doing gaming for YouTube. When it came to the early days of Nitsa Gamer, Let's Plays were my main source of entertainment. Occasionally I would show off a glitch video or a live action video, particularly for a series that I would call Off the Console. Whereas the name implies, I do recordings and stuff off of a video game console to show that I'm a live and breathe in person. But I guess it was also my excuse to keep the filmmaker in me alive as trying to film any projects during high school was near impossible because Hallmark doesn't understand that six hours of school is too much school enough. But Let's Plays were very easy to make and required little effort. What Let's Plays have I done, you ask? Well, here's all the Let's Plays that I have done in my entire life. Super Mario 64, Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut, Super Mario Sunshine, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets on the GameCube version, a Luigi's Mansion Let's Play that I did for another channel but never released the final part sadly, 
Puzzle mode of Tetris Attack, The Legend of Zelda Quest 1 only, a blind playthrough of a ROM hack of Super Mario 64 called Super Mario Star Road, a blind let's play of Amnesia The Dark Descent, which is like one of the least viewed videos that I have ever uploaded onto this channel, a cancelled blind let's play of Amnesia a Machine for Pigs, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban on the GameCube, a blind let's play of Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric, a blind let's play of Tomb Raider 2013, a cancelled let's play of Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, a blind let's play of Rise of the Tomb Raider, a let's play of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle where I released the first part on my 22nd birthday for a very personal reason. A blind playthrough of Telltale's The Walking Dead Season 2, Sonic Heroes, a blind playthrough of The Walking Dead and New Frontier, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone on the GameCube, and this would be my last Harry Potter playthrough despite wanting to play more in the series. A blind let's play of Sonic Mania, a blind let's play of Sonic Forces, a cancelled let's play of Super Mario Galaxy, Yandere Simulator, though I would eventually stop covering the game due to the controversy around the developer of the game, a blind playthrough of The Walking Dead The Final Season, only released three parts of Link's Awakening for the Switch, a semi-blind let's play of Persona 5 Royal, with the royal parts being the blind part, but only covering the first two palaces of the game, and finally, the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And that's it. It's been over three years since I've done a Let's Play, and the only reason I've stopped doing it is because they don't get views these days anymore. And after releasing my final parts to Persona 5 Royal and Breath of the Wild, I ventured into challenge runs which proved a lot more successful. But I'm too far into the future, so let's rewind back to when I started doing Let's Plays back when I did Mario games. Just two days before my birthday in 2012, I gained over 100 subscribers for the first time. And while I did have a bit of people watching my content since I started doing Let's Plays, what got me more recognition was a stream I joined in with an old friend named Super Nintendo Mike and Tony who would later become Them Cool Dudes. Although, while Tony slash Them Cool Dudes have disappeared from the internet from my knowledge, Super Nintendo Mike hasn't uploaded anything in over seven years, and it's quite sad. Used to be good friends with them, and I have no idea where they are in their lives anymore. Well, wherever you guys are, I hope you guys are living a good, happy life. Thanks for getting my channel over 100 subs, guys. One of the projects I was trying to make during high school was a Sonic fan film. No, I'm not kidding. The idea was made by my good friend Miles, who you can find on his channel Codbox. During high school, he had the ambitious idea of doing a live-action Sonic movie, but portrayed by human actors. I was going to be a part of this project and put a lot of thought into it, and I mean a lot that I bragged about it in numerous videos including my previously mentioned off the console series. It would have been Sonic and his friends going after a Chaos Jewel which ties into our big plot, and you have Dr. Eggman and his four teenage henchmen who would try to overthrow Sonic, and it was such a big ambitious idea. So ambitious that only a few scenes were made, actors lost interest and left the project, and so Miles and I unfortunately agreed to cancel it. Which sucks, but it's understandable for various reasons. I might make a video talking more about this project, how it was going to be one big movie, and how there was going to be a more adult prequel movie called Henchman Origins, which, let's just say, had really, really dark ideas that only my edgy teenage mind could think of. I mean, maybe I might take some of those ideas that I've had for Henchman Origins and maybe put it into another project, but... Hey, as I said, filmmaking is my passion, and I kept that passion with me even when everything around me stopped me from pursuing my dreams. It's sad that the Sonic movie never came to be, but it is what it is. Be sure to check out my good friend Miles, by the way. He covers mostly Nintendo videos, and he could definitely have a bigger subscriber count. Okay, three, two, one, action. Ah! Ow. Ow, my back. Ow, ow. After graduating high school, I immediately went into college for digital film and TV. 
I went to this film school for two years and had the opportunity to film some very fun projects and use equipment that I could never afford in my life. You can watch some of these projects on my Nitsa94 channel, and while they are a massive improvement from my high school days, I wouldn't expect to see anything that grand. Despite my intention of wanting to be a film director, I barely had the opportunity to direct any of the films I worked on, but the ones that I did direct, I can definitely say I'm the most proud of. Despite it causing me like 6 years of student loan debt that took forever to pay off, I did have a lot of fun and a great time being able to share and engage with other people in a passion that I really love. I would absolutely love to direct films and TV shows. I would even love to be a writer and write scripts and tell engaging and thought provoking stories. And now that I know how to write stuff like character development and emotional payoffs, I could definitely write better stories than my elementary school days where my writing was mostly just hero versus villain. And while I was very passionate about going forward with this, I also made sure to keep Nitsa Gamer alive as well. And then, I had a banner that would actually affect the next several years of my life. Since I was going to this college for film and TV, I was able to access better editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro, and it took six months to develop a massive project for YouTube. One that would change my life in more ways than I thought it would. On November 16th, 2014, I released a video called Top 7 Actual Good Things in Sonic 06. Now, it may not seem like it, but this video was a huge deal. For most of my YouTube career, I have always been under a thousand subscribers, so I thought of a crazy idea. What if I did something that nobody else has ever done before and talked about the good things of what is considered the worst Sonic game ever made? Obviously, this was before Rise of Lara came out. It was practically a religion in the Sonic fandom to hate this game and saying anything positive about it would be blasphemy. But what this resulted in was not just a lot of views, but becoming my most viewed video on the channel, and it pushed me to over a thousand subscribers, and it was about frickin' time. This video was also great because some Sonic fans personally thanked me for making it because it was about time that somebody talked about actual good things in a Sonic game that they actually really like. I mean, just because a game is considered bad by most does not mean that there aren't fans for it. And even a bad game can have good moments in it, and Sonic 06 is no exception. And honestly, it was refreshing to hear that I could bring light to what people like. Opinions are valid, and liking a game that most people hate is a totally okay feeling to have. This also made me more involved with the Sonic community, and while I've had a great deal of fandom drama, I've also made some really great friends and even had my first relationship thanks to the series. And since then, I've made more Sonic Let's Plays, a review on only the first half of the Sonic Boom TV series in a series of videos called Sonic Boom Vlogs, more Top 7 Sonic videos including Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric and Sonic Mania, and a really, really dated review on Sonic Forces, which was not successful. And I'm kind of glad it wasn't because my opinion on the game has soured over time. I was even going to do a Top 7 or a review video on Shadow the Hedgehog and have put lots of attempts into making it work, but I either had to rewrite it or change it or stopped out of burnout. But I seriously do want to make a video on Shadow the Hedgehog because honestly, I think it's an underappreciated game that gets way too much hate. Comment below if you would like to see that. While well, Sonic has become the most popular thing on my channel, for the next six years, however, things barely changed before the world itself got worse. If you were to ask me what I did between 2016 till the pandemic, the answer is not too much. It was when I realized just how hard the adult world can get. 
2016 was without a doubt my most depressing year. Not only was there a lot of bad things happening to me in general, but despite finishing film school at the end of 2015, I got no job in the film industry out of it, despite my numerous attempts to try to get one or even go independent and make my own films. When it came down to it, you had to be rich and popular and have a lucky shooting start to do anything big in the industry all of which never went in my favor. And the only job offer I did get a call for expected unpaid work out of me and to have equipment that I don't own. So yeah, I mostly went to college for student loans and got no job in the film industry. And despite my attempts to go independent, that only did not work out, but it fell hard flat, making me waste thousands of dollars for only one scene being shot. In this industry, nobody works for free unless it's a student film, and I'm not doing student films anymore, and so, my passion to create films died, and it was debilitating. And as of early July 2016, my cat Diamond, who I was so close to, passed away. And her death was not only sudden, but it hit me hard. My parents had to convince me that she could be saved, and with no choice, I was in tears as I looked at her eye to eye as she was put down. I was in a deep depression and refused to adopt another cat because I wanted my cat back. I wanted Diamond back. It took a whole year where I reluctantly allowed my sister to adopt another cat. And since then, I have recovered. I still miss Diamond, but I guess I just had yet to adapt to the reality around me. Life is unfair. Shit happens. Stuff you want to do falls apart and all you can do is just move forward. While I still continue doing videos for YouTube, I was on autopilot for a long while. With maybe the only breakthrough having my first relationship, only for me to have to break up with them because they were toxic. And my second relationship, despite being more healthy, wasn't as genuine as I think we just fell in love out of need of wanting a partner to be in love with. So that relationship eventually broke apart. While I still had great moments, I still wanted to pursue my career in film as I felt YouTube was getting me nowhere. And then, it happened. The goddamn global pandemic. And for the most part, nothing changed for me, aside from having to be more careful when going out. Just like everyone, I suffered from this pandemic greatly, and out of desperation, I knew that if I couldn't make my film career be a thing, I had to do something else. Something that could push my YouTube channel to better heights or for me to socialize better with my locals. Because while having online long distance friendships is nice, it's debilitating when you consider the fact that you may never meet them. And as the pandemic started to become less restrictive, I changed my approach on life. On December 28th, 2017, I started playing my very first Persona game ever, Persona 5 Vanilla. And this became one of my favorite games of all time as I felt the themes of rebellion and fighting to make your own independent choices against the expectations of society were themes that really hit hard for me. I mean, okay, I haven't been given a criminal record by a politician yet, but it became a story that I grew to love. So naturally, when Persona 5 Royal was on the horizon, I wanted to jump on board and make YouTube videos on this game that I loved. And so, on top of making a video where I gave tips and who I believe are the best confidants based on their perks, I also did my very first challenge run. Challenge runs are very inspiring to me, and I've watched a lot of them, with maybe my biggest inspiration for challenge runs being from GameChamp3000. Not only did I want to have a similar sense of humor like she has, but I also wanted to cover challenging ideas that people could sit back and enjoy. Seeing that Let's Plays are a dead genre, and reviews don't get popular unless you're popular with the series that you're reviewing. And considering the popularity that your bud Tevin was getting with his challenge runs on Persona 5, I wanted to jump in on the bandwagon. The first challenge run released was on Persona 5 Royal, but without raising any of Joker's social stats. The video performed well enough, but not enough to get me past the 4k subscriber count that I've been stuck on for years. So out of desperation, I made the most masochistic idea of a challenge run ever. The Persona 5 Royal Doing Nothing Challenge Run. 
This became so popular, it actually pushed me past 10k subscribers. A feat that made me want to do this stupid idea in the first place. No, I didn't do the do it nothing run because I'm a masochist. I did it out of desperation to gain more views and subscribers, so it feels like my years on YouTube were not wasted. And I guess I can say, sitting around and doing something I hate as a living is something that I was just used to. Because I never got what I wanted out of life. Or when I did have those opportunities to get those moments, they go away pretty fast. And thankfully, my effort did pay off. And so, I made challenge runs as a new thing on my channel that I still do to this day. I couldn't be more happy for my stupid achievement, and while it may have given me PTSD, it was worth it knowing the outcome paid off. And now, Nitsa Gamer was no longer just a hobby. It became something that I had a reason to be passionate about and keep alive. But even if I found a footing, I am still in need of a lot of improvements. I've had many ups and downs and changes of interest over the years of story creation, how to tell it in what medium, and creating a gaming channel that started off as just a side hobby. Nowadays, I am socializing with local friends more and not just my online ones. I am looking at my options to get into the film industry or to even create my own stories, but perhaps my time to create will come soon. For now, creating YouTube videos will have to do. My life is ever-changing, and I've grown and matured over the years, learning from mistakes, neglecting what society expects out of me and instead do what I love to do, accepting myself for who I am, and while I'm sure there's more downsides that await, I know an unexpected surprise will happen around the corner. While I do wish for my name to one day appear in a movie credit scroll, I'm honestly okay with going more independent and not Hollywood because independent is more free anyway, even if it means more limitations. I don't know where my life is going to go from here, I just know I want to create, entertain, and make the most out of what I can do. I just gotta be able to find the foot in and do more than what I've already have done. And it's truly thanks to you guys who have stuck with me for as long as you have. Whether if you're a new subscriber for the Persona content, or an old time subscriber from my Sonic and Mario days. I don't know what comes next, but I can assure you, I am not giving up on It's a Gamer. There's only going to be more videos to come, and hopefully more from me outside of It's a Gamer will come. Time will tell. I am It's a Gamer, I am a storyteller, a filmmaker, and a gamer. And I can only hope I can be more than that. Hey everybody, so thank you so much for watching this video. So if you like it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and ding the bell for more Nitsa Gamer content. And thank you to my channel members, including Deadshot and Thanky Ronald. If you would like your name to be shown or shout out at the end of the videos, then be sure to become a channel member. Until then, thank you all so much for watching. It's my 30th birthday. I feel way too old. And uh, I'm just going to be figuring out where I'm going to be taking my life from this point forward. Thank you all so much for watching, and you'll have a good day, good night.